Thank you very much. And I could not agree more with Senator Billick when it comes to the importance of organ donation. And I uh, commend her comments about getting online, registering for organ donation, a very important thing, and for the need to ensure that your family is aware of your wishes, uh, to make sure that your final wish is respected by those around you uh, and your organs, your tissues can be used to help prolong someone else's life. There is no greater gift than the gift of organ and tissue donation. It's a very important but challenging issue for families and for medical teams in the wider community. It is a very important conversation that everyone should have. For your family, knowing what your final wishes are actually helps in the grieving process and in the final days. The slogan, don't take your organs to heaven, heaven knows we need them here, epitomises the essence of why organ donation must be promoted, must be supported and must be encouraged. Indeed, uh, I lost my father last year, but we had spoken very openly in our family uh, about what his wishes were. And we were able to donate his eyes um, to, to a lucky recipient. His beautiful eyes uh, live on. Had his disease not um, riddled him, we certainly would have been able to give more of his, uh, his organs. But knowing that that was what he wanted made the whole grieving process that little bit easier for us. And the decision so easy because we knew that it was what he wanted. It wasn't what we had decided. But I do hold concerns about this current bill before the Senate and the amendments it proposes to the Australian Organ and Tissue Donation and Transplantation Authority Act 2008. While it is a bill full of good intent, and uh, I understand the aims of the bill. We want to be able to talk about organ donation. We want to promote it. We want to have education campaigns. So I totally get the intent of the bill. But as we saw through the Senate committee, somehow, somehow the, uh, the actual implementation or development of this bill has not quite hit the right tone and certainly has raised significant concerns amongst um, the donor community. Uh, this bill uh, was sent to the Senate Community Affairs and Legislation Committee for inquiry and the inquiry reported in July. It was a very quick, short, sharp inquiry, uh, two weeks, but it received 26 submissions from departments, organisations and individuals. And uh, I, I just want to highlight, the bill's explanatory memorandum outlines the purpose of the bill to broaden the disclosure of information provisions. But ironically, the interpretation of the bill from many donor families suggests that in fact the bill does the opposite. And there is wide concern amongst donor families, and I've received several uh, correspondence from donor families uh, around the country raising their concerns that this bill may actually inhibit their ability and their capacity to speak about what their family has gone through, be they a donor recipient or the family of a donor. Uh, organ donation is comparatively low in Australia, and we do need to promote it. We do need to ensure that all levels of government support and encourage people to make a positive choice to donate life. But um, we need to make sure that we are hearing the concerns of the donor community. Um, the Organ and Tissue Donation and Transplant Authority, known as the OTA, gave assurances to the committee that the bill would not affect ownership of information. Uh, and there's a, a big list in the bill that outlines, or, or in, in the explanatory documents, that outlines how it will protect families from prosecution for communicating information about deceased donors under various state and territory laws. However, this was not reflected in 
the, uh, the submissions to the committee. As one submission said, and I quote, as an organ recipient for some 33 years, in my opinion, this legislation is designed to restrict our human right of freedom of speech for all donor families and families of deceased recipients. When donor families say yes to donation, they will have, unbeknown to them, handed over control of their loved one's information to the government." End quote. And this is a concern that has been reflected in several submissions. Another submission said, quote, when I consented to the donation of Scott's organs and tissues, I did not consent to handing over the ownership of Scott's donation story to Donate Life or the OTA. In retrospect, I have serious doubts about whether I would have consented to the donation if I had known that the government would attempt to introduce such draconian measures restricting my freedom to share Scott's stories. I am also disappointed that no consultation was sought from donor families like mine. Scott's organ and tissue donation provided comfort during the early days of my grief and is an immense source of pride to me and our families. I find it inhumane that legislation could be drafted in this country that would seek to silence us." End quote. And that has been reflected broadly. Families who had agreed to organ donation uh, hold serious concerns that through this new measure, their right to share their story in their way will be limited. Other familiar themes from private organ donor family submissions was that they were, they were offended they had not been consulted. And indeed, it would appear that they were not given the Department of Health's own submission said they only had one objection from one donor family. So that begs the question, well, how many donor families did you reach out to, given that the inquiry had so many submissions? Uh, the, coalition, the coalition, we're on record. We, actually, we support the intention of this bill. And as I said in my introductory comments, uh, we certainly acknowledge and recognise the need to further promote organ donation and, and get more people to sign up on the register. But it is our job in this place to ensure that in drafting well-intentioned legislation, we don't inadvertently have unintended consequences. And that is the concern that so many people have raised with me about this bill. So I acknowledge that in the Department of Health submission, it was at pains to point out that no provision of this bill affects ownership of information. They were at pains to say that there was no assumption that when a family consents to organise organ donation, they have consented to the use of their loved one's information. Or that they said the bill does not propose restrictions on how, how family members conduct community awareness programs. But if that's true, why are so many families interpreting the bill in another way? Why have so many otherwise very informed people involved in the donor family network interpreting it and saying the government's got it wrong? As the chair of Donor Families Australia said in their covering letter to the Senate inquiry, DFA is the only organisation that represents donor families nationally and as such we are able to speak from lived experience how these changes to the proposed amendment, as mentioned, will directly affect our membership and, in fact, donation and consent rates into the future. As can be demonstrated by our submission, we and our membership strongly feel that the wording of the proposed amendment is excluding families in their grief to their human right of free speech." End quote. So what I know is that, once again, true to form, this Labor government has failed to do its homework and has failed to fully consult with the stakeholders and the very people who will be, so, who will be primarily impacted by this amendment. And we're seeing it time and time again with this government that uh, they're, they're 
at pains to show and, and they're getting things done, but they're not doing the research. They're not doing the fact-checking. They're not doing the ground-truthing. Because while our departments uh, work very hard to give us fair and frank advice, sometimes they are not the purveyors of all the wisdom, particularly when it comes to issues such as this that are so personal. And uh, it really was commensurate on the department to have reached out, they should have reached out to Donor Families Australia and they should have heeded the concerns of Donor Families Australia and uh, taken into consideration how they could better draft this amendment to ensure that all of those concerns were actually dealt with and that the, in the inadverted consequences that these organisations and the donor families are interpreting will, will have um, are addressed. The government must recognise the negative aspects of this legislation and work to restore confidence to the Australian community. In saying that, we've already uh, advised that we support the legislation, we support organ donation, we certainly support promoting it and trying to get more and more people to sign up to the organ donor register. Uh, and I certainly, I'll put it out here because talk to your families, but I'm telling all of you as well, I'm an organ donor. Please go your hardest, take whatever you want. <laughs> it's all yours when my time comes. But um, we, do, we, we will be supporting this legislation, but I implore the government and I implore the department to work with Donor Families Australia, to work with the donor family community, uh, the recipients, their families of donors, and to make sure these concerns are addressed and resolved so that they can freely talk about their loved ones in a way that they are comfortable with while we continue to support and promote and educate about the value of organ donation. Thank you.